Hey guys, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. I thought we would do something really fun today since we're coming up on Halloween. I wanted to do a little segment here all about um, fluorescent minerals and fluorescent jewelry and jewelry that fluoresces. So I think this will be, like I said, super duper fun. We're going to focus on some items that naturally fluoresce and why they fluoresce and, and all of the fun stuff associated with fluorescent stones and minerals. And so... If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, NOLA Collectibles. I'm a part-time reseller. I sell mostly on eBay. My username there is NOLA Collectibles and my content is all jewelry focused. So jewelry on baggings, collection shares, unboxings, haul videos, all of that good stuff, thread up, shop Goodwill, Goodwill Blue Box, all of those goodies, all jewelry focused. Um, so let's get, get, get kind of like get right into it because I don't want to waste any time. Um, I don't want to waste any of your time. But I will say, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, I was always into minerals and fossils and all of that stuff. And so like we would go to the Museum of Natural History in New York with my family and I'd like run past the dinosaur bone exhibit straight to the mineral exhibit. <laughs> and of course, like as a kid, the most exciting, I think, um, area for me was like where they showed the minerals that had fluorescence and that would fluoresce. Um, cause what kid is like, Ooh, let's go into the dark room and see all these cool rocks that glow in the dark. So I've always been kind of like fascinated with some of those things. And so, uh, you know, it crosses over big time. And I think there's a really fun opportunity to kind of talk about things, minerals and jewelry that does fluoresce. And so I'm starting right here kind of like with amber because I think this is just um, an, a very obvious kind of way to go. Amber, we all know all about amber. It's fossilized hardened resin of trees and it ranges in age kind of like from less than a million to more than 300 million years old. And it, um, it hardens by losing kind of volatile components that evaporate in the air over time. And that's how it becomes hardened. Uh, so it's then kind of followed by a second stage of hardening, hardening in which the resin molecules, they, um, they kind of form like a polymer. And that's why it gets that sticky feeling. When you touch amber, it often has a feeling that feels like plastic. And it's got like a very distinct feeling in your hand. And so that's always a good way for me. It's Some people mistake amber for plastic. It has that similar kind of lightweight feel to it that plastic has, but um, you know, for me in your hand, it definitely feels very distinct. Uh, so, you know, most popular with ambers obviously is Baltic ambers and Baltic ambers are the ones that wash up on the shore of the Baltic Sea in Northern Europe, but also, you know, kind of ambers found throughout Scandinavia and North, uh, North, North Eastern Europe, Poland, Russia, Lithuania, all very popular for their amber, um, for the amber jewelry that comes out of that region. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it because you see my lighting's like a little dark here. I'm going to do it. We have, I, I, I tend to, um, I have this UV flashlight that I purchased on Amazon. And I think it's very helpful for showing you when you want to go look and see if amber is legitimate, it's going to fluoresce. So you can kind of see there, it's got this weird cast to it. It's actually, it's green. It doesn't show up that well on camera, but when you shine the UV light on it, it, it definitely shows like a very green cast to it. You can see it's as I slowly kind of move it over the amber, you can see there the way that it fluoresces. Um, so when you're looking to tell if amber is authentic, this is usually a good way to test it. And, um, you know, these UV, UV flashlights are very inexpensive. I think I purchased this one for $10 on Amazon. And so um, it's a good investment for, for this, but for, I think, uh, several other re uh, reasons because lots of minerals and lots of stones fluoresce. So again, just kind of like getting into that. And, um, you know, copal, which is just younger amber, it's not as old as regular amber, it will not fluoresce when you put it. So when I put it close, you can see how kind of, there's a weird kind of cast over the stone. Um, it will not fluoresce. So copal is just the younger iteration of amber. And again, when you put it under the UV light, you will not see a fluorescence on it. So again, that's like a really good um, kind of way of telling real amber from faux amber. Um, I have a couple of necklaces here, just amber chips. We tend to see these guys quite a bit. And this is a little bit of a more fancy kind of amber where um, it's cut and polished 
um, in, in kind of this like design here with the dark and the light, which is very, very pretty. And so, you know, when you think about like fluorescing jewelry and fluorescing stones, like why does it fluoresce? And it's just very basic kind of science. It's we're exciting the electrons and um, giving off the photons and the mineral. And, and that's what causes the UV light. So um, UV light won't excite a mineral until, unless it contains an impurity element that functions as the activator. So there's something in there that activates and excites. And that's how we're seeing the, the fluorescence. So really quick like I said want to kind of get right into that and so that's amber and so what else fluoresces are corundums and the corundum family of uh, jewelry uh, is sapphires uh, I'm sorry rubies and sapphires are both corundums so just have a little bit of jewelry here let's start I think with rubies start right here and so yeah um, part of the corundum family and so I don't know if you remember this guy I pulled this one out of a jewelry bag and when I go and I flash the light on it you could see that it fluoresces very brightly this guy fluoresces very brightly as well um, this is an art deco kind of ruby ring with channel set rubies also fluoresces very nicely and so corundum family sapphires and rubies they're actually colorless so that's why um, and then when you're in when you're adding things like chromium to it, the chromium is actually what gives ruby its natural coloration. Um, when you're entering those colors, then that's what impacts, imparts the color to the stone. Um, so all rubies fluoresce, so it doesn't matter if they're natural rubies or they're synthetic rubies because synthetic rubies are made with the same chemical composition as natural rubies. This guy right here, again, you can see kind of looks like that. Um, so the ones with the uh, that fluoresce the most are the ones that have almost like a pink undertone to them in natural daylight. So those are the ones in, in terms of rubies where you will see the brightest fluorescence under the UV light. Just like that. So that's really fun, I think. Um, and so, you know, with sapphires, I am not a big collector of like natural blue colored sapphires, but I will tell you, I like the spectrum of color, of color that's available with sapphire jewelry, and I really like pink sapphires. So a couple of pieces of jewelry here that are pink sapphire. And you can kind of see there how they fluoresce. So again, um, you know, I they're all part of the corundum family and uh, sapphires come in every color. I have yellow sapphires as well. And again, it's what kind of addition you're adding that gives it its coloration. So again, sapphires, rubies, same family, flor both fluoresce. Um, so I'm just going to move really quick, I guess, into uh, spinel. Spinel has this kind of light green coloration to it. This is a piece of jewelry that I pulled out of a thread up box. It's um, made by a brand called Strel. It's a mid-century modern brand. They in innovated this lighthouse cut that you see here that has lots of facets to it. It's kind of this yellow under normal light, yellow light green colored stone, synthetic spinel. Very popular in the 50s and 60s and mid-century uh, era of jewelry making. Similar here, this is another synthetic spinel. This one has a very large emerald cut stone with some steps, step cutting on the side, making it very fancy. And then this one here, similarly, again, this is another one. You can see the color is a little bit deeper here. And these guys have manganese with the manganese in them is the element that is the activating element. So when you expose them to the UV, that's what's going to cause the fluorescence. So here you can see super fluor it's super, super fluoresces. And that's pretty cool. I'll show you these guys. How cool is that? I mean, it almost looks like ec it's like ectoplasm. <laughs> I 
That's super fun, I think. And you know, people are into um, jewelry that fluoresces. Again, it kind of goes back to being a kid and, and things that excited you about minerals and stones and the natural naturally occurring things in nature and, and, and like the excitement that they do something extra. It's like a magic trick. You know, you, you're in the dark, um, you know, you're, or you expose it to UV light, you go in your jewelry box, you're like, wow, look at all this, it looks amazing, it's cool. And so I always think that that's like a super fun kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to get into also uranium glass. Uranium glass uh, has been around probably for 100 years or so. And it was a technique that was introduced into glass making uh, where they, and again, you're thinking about these elements, in this case, uranium. It was used in glass making because it imparted a green coloration to glass. Um, and so it became very popular in glass making, just how you would expect how cobalt produced a blue colored glass. Uranium was used because it produced this yellow, green, bright green kind of looking coloration. And so um, there's collectors of uranium glass out there. And I, again, I think it's for the same kind of rationale and reason. Um, it's kind of got this cool factor to it because um, uranium is radioactive. You know, if you were to introduce a Geiger counter, it would actually read on a Geiger counter. And that's because uranium typically would be include, included in glass uh, from 2% up to 20%, so which is quite a bit. So, you know, but it's also not unsafe. So uranium, it did go through a period of where it was banned. Um, I think in the early 1950s, they put a lot of limitations on it and production was halted. It soon was then led to able to continue on when they discovered there was no, um, you know, ill effect that was occurring with people because the exposure was so minimal. So <laughs> um, that's kind of like what it is there. And, and um, very popular in jewelry from the 1880s to 1920s. Um, <clears throat> it, there's a lot of debate about who originated uranium glass. I think the most popular theory is that it came from the Czech Republic and um, they were the first to produce uranium glass and it was in two colors, in a green and a yellow. And so his name was Joseph Riedel who introduced it. And so it's not uncommon too that when you come across Czech jewelry or, you know, Czech beads, Czech glass, Czech beaded, you know, beaded glass jewelry and that type of thing um, that you will encounter, you know, uranium stones or um, glass that glows coming out of, coming from jewelry out of those regions. Um, so a couple of pieces here and I wanted to show you, I think, you know, this guy right here, so you can see how crazy it fluoresces. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? So fun. And this is actually a piece of um, Hollycraft jewelry right here. So I encourage you, if you collect vintage jewelry and you're into it, um, take a black, get a UV light like this and just take it to your jewelry. If it has that green glow, green kind of looking stone to it, it's very possible that you might have a piece of uranium jewelry on your hands and not even know it. So I think this is very fun. These, these clip-on earrings, you can see how they fluoresce. It's so bright. So we have those guys. Um, this one doesn't fluoresce as much, but it still does fluoresce. And this one's very old. You can kind of see it like a little bit there. And this one likely contains a lower percentage of uranium in, in the um, rhinestones here. And then this uh, this one is a sweetheart pendant um, with a monogram, and it actually says Shirley on it, and it had, again, the green kind of stones, and you can see there that they fluoresce right there. So super, super cool. I just think all of this type of jewelry, uranium glass, is, is just super fun, and there's a lot of you know, enthusiasts out there. There's actually a Facebook, a Facebook group that is dedicated to uranium glass jewelry. I'm a member of it. I encourage you to go check it out. It's just fun. And um, a lot of people there trading uranium glass jewelry or alerting each other to sales. And so, yeah, just I think another kind of little interesting component of the jewelry that we love, the jewelry we collect, 
it's just fascinating um, in, in addition to the natural kind of stones that fluoresce we have the you know the man-made components of jewelry that came from the Czech Republic and came into existence in the United States as well so super fun and I hope you guys kind of enjoy this really brief video with me on fluorescing jewelry and so, yeah, let me know, you guys, if you if you have ever done this, if you've checked out your jewelry with a black light, if you happen to notice that anything fluoresced and like, you know, what it's all about. If, you know, if you have any questions about the uranium glass, let me know. I encourage you to go check out that Facebook group. It's super fun. And so, yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in with me for this quick little fun info informational video um, just about fluorescing jewelry and stone. So I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you at the next one. Give me a like and a subscribe on the way out and take care folks. Bye.